and inspect materials. There really is anything, there's really not, not a whole lot we can't run. Um, all town, that has to be run at 500 degrees Fahrenheit, P, PVC, we have all these different filled materials, graphite filled, carbon filled, glass filled, and then your other stuff, the Santaprines, your ABS, polycarbonate, nylons. Um, there's people running all kinds of different fibers and, and, and stuff into these, into these plastics. The one thing that we asked, one thing we had a customer um, send us material, and they send us blow molding material for induction molding press. Not so good. So if you're going to send us material, if you want to send us material, make sure it's injection moldable. Uh, again, one of the things you can do, you can do over molding. Here's another slide. Now this is not true two shot. This is purely over molding with a substrate part being shot here. And then we show it at the same time, but that's the over molded part there. So as we'll watch out again, So you do those two pickouts to capture the undercuts on those features. So that's a substrate. We'll put the substrate back in there and then shoot the overmold part from there. <coughs> Here's the parts. Substrate, overmold, the, the final final part there. So these this is as functional as you can get with the soft drama over the over the hard drummer. One of my favorite shows is The Simpsons, and, and and one of the things is on the show, somebody tried to inform Homer that a ham, pork chops, and bacon were all from the same animal. And, and Homer said, not even God could create a perfect animal like that. <laughs> and, and so, no, it's true. This stuff really can do all those types of things. And that's, that's the exciting part about it. Other low volume options is, is you can make family tools out of aluminum. You can make multi-cavity tools if you see yourself needing a little higher end of the low volume side. But then I, I get the what ifs. What if we need 100,000 parts? Or what if we start seeing some wear in the tool? What if we have these things? Well, you're not stuck. If you need to, we remember, we've already made the mold design, we've already programmed it, we've already machined it, and we've already assembled it, we've already sampled it. So with us, we know how to do it once. So what we have, we already have the, the programming done, already have the mold design done. So we can drop that part line, 10 thousands, remachine a, a core, remachine a cavity. You're not stuck there. If you want, while we're running parts here, we can take the same program, make a new tool, and run them in parallel to each other. We can uh, use it as a bridge into higher production. So many people just fear well, if I need more parts, you know, we, we did a, a project for a company and, and, the, and the marketing director was like, what if we're expecting 3,000 parts a year for five years, but what if we need, a, we need 100,000? Well, those are great problems to have. A, you can afford class A tooling at that point, mute point. So, and then, but there's, there's options to do that, multi-cavity, family tool, drop part lines, stuff like that. So, let's talk about cost savings. My father brought this up yesterday. He said, when, when, do you know who could tell us how, how much it costs to go to, to China? So I made a few phone calls, and first of all, our average tooling cost was between four thousand eight thousand dollars for to make a aluminum tool. Last year we made about three hundred forty forty molds to our shop. You know, over a mold a day count uh, as a calendar goes. Average delivery two to three weeks. I lose jobs in China, and in China isn't. They're not the end of the world. They're a good source for the right application. Well, I love it when I come in at $7,000, the Chinese came in at $4,000. They beat me by $3,000. But the product's delayed, they had to go over there. So I also look at airfare. Now, I booked this. Oh, I didn't book it. But if you want to, here's what you can go for. Leaving next Tuesday. So you give yourself a week in advance to tell your wife and kids, bye and we're gone for a while. From MSP into Tokyo to Shanghai to Shenzhen, about 26 and a half to 30 hours, depending on how many direct flights or how many connecting flights you want. But I found pricing from 1900 to 8500 and we're in a recession, that's coach. Nobody's flying business class anymore, so that's coach. And so that, that's, what, that's what you get to. And this one, too, is the last seat on the plane. It wasn't an aisle seat or a window. So, so that's what you have to, you know, and again, we even, we even touched base on hotels, food, your visa, your, your passports, that kind of stuff, transportation. So all of a sudden, right there, you're looking at, on average, between $6,000 a week. So you go for a two-week trip, $12,000. But they beat me by $3,000 on the tool. You know, but people say, oh, that's a different budget, a different budget. Still, still the same company. So this is kind of a reality of, you know, when it comes to speed, two to three weeks for $8,000, for $8,000, that's competitive. Those are low-volume needs here. Say about using pickouts. One of the things here, here's a, here's a Toro... Um, prototype of, of a blower here, a blower tube. The mold size is 18 by 13 inches. So 18 here, 13 there. The pickup alone is 16 inches long. That's 16 inches. 
That mold size, we could maintain at 18 by 13, and that pickout sat right inside there nicely. If we were to make a production tool or, or build an automated tool, that mold size would increase to 34 by 13, because now this, this, this area needs to travel out of that tool by 16 inches. So now you have a tool that's 18 inches. Now you want to make a tool, the same tool for 34, or for, for 30, 34 inches. That cost goes up from material cost, machining, moving around your shop. Now to build all the cams and the slides with that, they only need 100 parts. Well, I want it automated. Well, you know, you look at the a tool here, I think this tool was uh, $16,000. I always like telling people our average is $4,000 to $8,000, and I have samples of tools that are $18,000. But this one's a larger part. And so, again, $18,000, or do you want to build a $100,000, $150,000, dollars tool to have it automated? You know, that's where the low volume, that's where the payoff is. So now, I, that's my part of the presentation. I'm very excited. I, I, I got permission from David Worth from Clinton Aluminum. I'm very gracious. These aren't my words anymore. This is from Honda did a case study, and this is very fascinating. There's an article about this in Plastic News about two months ago now, and they, they, they released a lot of the data. And so I, I, have, I am very appreciative of Honda to do, have done this R&D project, and then we can talk about it. So, again, thank you to David Worth from Clinton Aluminum. So Honda requests a new model for planning, best tool material for production volume, best tool layout, best process cost, Develop a comprehensive tool strategy to uh, include alternative materials and sourcing um, locations. So right away is clamping pressure. Can't loot them, hold it up. So now this where all over, way over my head, we're talking about the unit stress projection area mold. But they're talking about a mold here of 46 inches by 74 inches. We're not talking the stuff I was showing you under 20 inches. This is big, 46 by 72 inches, 74 inches. Project area of the part. Uh, 955 um, inches uh, squared, kind of area, basically the stress of a 2,500 ton press. So we're doing all the math, and the tensile strength of 75 aluminum is, 70, is 77,600 psi. That's only 2.6 percent of the alloy uh, um, of the tensile strength of aluminum. 2.6. So yes, it can handle it. Here's a big aluminum tool. And they say, can't hold up. It absolutely can. So now it comes, can't hold up to the injection pressure. And so they look at the, the comprehensive strength of the alloy, 77,600 PSI. The maximum injection pressure at the front of the screw, regardless of the machine size, was going to be at 33,000 PSI. So you take that percentage, only gets up to 42.5% of the maximum of the highest possible pressure. So without a doubt, it can handle those pressures. So what they're finding is they found their uh, lower cost on mold build, mold building. The, aluminum's can, the aluminum mold can be machined 30% faster compared to a hardened tool steel or, or P20. Polish time, which you kind of forget about the surface finish, can be polished 4 to 10 times faster because it's slightly softer than a harder alloy. Aluminum is uh, third uh, the weight of steel, and then that way it allows you to ship in one to three days because you're shipping half, you know, a fraction of the weight compared to other stuff. Increased cycle times. Aluminum has five times higher thermal conductivity compared to P20. It has almost six times uh, more than, um, than the H13 steel. And molders have experienced 20 to 40% faster cycle time. So everybody in the production that wants it, you know, cheaper parts, faster cycle time, actually there's a way of getting that using aluminum. This is very, very interesting. So this, again, Honda did this case study. This is an aluminum tool. This is a P20 tool. They shot the same parts, shot count 61,000 parts, 61,000 parts, polypropylene. So it wasn't the world's great, the hardest material to ever shoot, polypropylene. Cycle time, 50 seconds for the P20. Cycle time, 30 seconds on aluminum. So you can actually reduce your costs by running those volumes out of aluminum. But here's what I think find fascinating. These are water lines, cooling lines. One, two, three, four in aluminum. One, two, three, four, five, six. And P20. So you still had to put more cooling lines in to make that tool to run it slower than making a tool with four cooling lines to run it faster out of aluminum. 